now playing Why So Serious. What is the Matrix? Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? No, oh, what's in the box? You like scary movies. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? You talking to me? You talking to me? Movie reviews in 20 cues. Hello, good people, and welcome to the podcast Movie Reviews in 20 Qs, the show where we review a movie by asking 20 weird and wonderful questions about it. I am your host, Sam Hurley, and as you can tell by the name of this podcast, we've had to do another retro throwback to a film that came out this month. This time, we've done a film that came from 24 years ago. And, well, I was debating what film to do this month, and then this film pretty much wrote itself in the lead up to Independence Day. And I thought to myself, Mm -hmm. if you're going to do Independence Day, you've got to do Independence Day's biggest fan. So I reached out to the Netflix and Swill guys and got them on the podcast. Now, the biggest fan, of course, is Dan Brennick from Netflix Swill. Dan, how are you? Hello, boys. I'm back. <laughs> you were back on a podcast you've never been on before. That's amazing. Uh, I, I know. Uh, I, I was abducted by, one, by you one time and uh, then sent back. And now I spout about it drunkenly to anybody who will listen. So I'm the source of your chronic alcoholism. I knew it. I knew Nailed it. it. I'm drinking a beer right now, too. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And the other half of Netflix as well is Caleb. How the hell are you, Caleb? Welcome to Earth. I'm good. Uh, are you a massive Independence Day fan as well, Caleb? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes! And that's ah. why this podcast is going to be interesting. <laughs> oh, fuck is it ever. <laughs> Holy fuck is it ever. I cannot wait for this. Because, Dan, you've done what a lot of people consider a fatal mistake when they come on this podcast, which is picking one of their favorite films, because they then have to defend it against two assholes who might just start ripping into you for it. Uh, Are you ready to defend? I I just listened to the Gentleman Review, and uh, I'm very prepared to be torn down. Now, of course, uh, I I also take that with the side that I don't care about anyone's opinion about anything, uh, except for my own. So I'm fine with you tearing it down. Just like every single week you go, boy, Blink-182's All the Small Things is fucking garbage. <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. Uh, thank you, Dan. Well, yeah, I mean, as I mentioned before, we are doing Independence Day. Came out in 1996. It has a directed by Roland Emmerich. Had a budget of $75 million. Went oh. on to take a worldwide gross of $817 million. Yeah. Almost became the first film to gross a billion dollars, but got beaten by Titanic the next year. IMDb, 7 out of 10, Metacritic, 59%, Rotten Tomatoes, 66%, starring Will Smith, Bill Pullman, Jeff Goldblum, Mira McDonald, Judd Hirsch, Robert Loggia, Randy Craig, and uh, Vivica A. Fox, who's not actually a fox. It's just amazing how your New, New zealand uh, has you pronouncing names. It's Robert Loggia and Vivica A. Fox, not Vivica, what, or whatever the fuck you pronounce her name as. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's us. We don't know how to use vowels. Every single vowel for us is a U. So just like uh, '90s grunge singers, every vowel was an A. <laughs> there we go. There we go. We're at the other end of the spectrum from '90s grunge singers. We learn something new every day. Uh, Dan, since you're the biggest fan of this movie in the world, you like usually we get whoever's watched the most recently do a plot. You're going to have to give us a plot, Dan. Tell us the plot of Independence Day. Yeah, so this follows around uh, four separate main characters, the President of the United States, uh, a glorified cable repairman, uh, a, a, a marine air pilot, uh, and a, a drunken guy uh, played by Randy Quaid, or actually Randy Quaid plays himself, basically. Uh, and aliens invade the Earth, and we don't know what's up with them because uh, there's a countdown and all that stuff, and you don't want to hear about it here, just watch the movie. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Short snaps. This, this is the most snappiest one we've ever had. I'm so proud of you. That's brilliant. This is probably the most uh, fleshed out a Roland Emmerich movie has been in terms of story. Uh, he actually, you know, kind of builds some tension before he starts blowing up national yeah. monuments. It's true. It is true. I, I've got to admit, on the rewatch, I was very surprised at actually how many characters are in this. Like, it takes a quite, quite a while to even get to Will Smith's character. What yeah, he doesn't get introduced to like forty minutes, like thirty, forty minutes in. Yeah, yeah. Is that and it's like quake? real quick too. <laughs> Barely a four pointer. Go back to Ben. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, if you guys haven't heard this podcast before, what we do is we review a movie by asking twenty weird and wonderful questions about it. We chuck ten questions that can be applied uh, to any film at the start, and we then go into three personal questions before we finish on a listener question. Though this week we don't have a listener question, and this week we have a new Patreon, and that Patreon is going to finish us so we can sing his praises. 
The one that we always start on is the compliment sandwich, which is one thing good, one thing bad, one thing good that we liked about this film. If we are giving this film a score of over 5,000 out of 10,000, if we choose to give it a score under 5,000, we give it a shit sandwich, which is one thing bad, one thing good, and then one thing bad. So, yeah, up to you, boys. I, I feel, oh, oh, let the compliment sandwich guarantee go first. Dan, why don't you, why don't you start us off? First and foremost, uh, despite this being a disaster porn movie, this is littered with miniatures, practical miniatures, a lot of practical effects. Uh, yep. You don't see that in big budget Hollywood movies anymore. It's a lot of CGI garbage. So it's kind of refreshing to watch this and be like, oh, miniature, 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 miniature. Like you're picking out little things. It's like, okay. Yeah, like the miniatures look a little bit dated, but as compared to what the CG would have looked like in that day, uh, it's yeah, it's way better. Like, I love like it. Like they actually built a model of the White House and like blew it up practically, and then CGI yeah. inserted the beam coming down from the ship. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, my bad thing. So at the beginning of the movie, uh, Randy Quaid is flying his plane drunkenly. Uh, and then there's a beat where he gets out of his plane and drunkenly stumbles, and there's like this kind of whimsical score beat. That plays over that. That's my negative. Uh, <laughs> don't glorify alcohol by saying that drunken idiots are whimsical and funny because it's not funny. <laughs> right. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'm whimsical and, uh, and funny. <sighs> Sometimes. <laughs> uh, and then actually, like, the acting of the four main characters, I feel like is fairly strong. I, I'll be the first to admit, I don't think what's actually written on the page is very good. It's uh, probably a bone average script, but. You know, when you get four actors who are actually doing a very good job, in my opinion, they are elevating what's on the page into something greater than what is written. Makes sense. Yeah, I can take that. Cool. Uh, we'll wait. We'll get your score at the end. We'll move, sure. on to Ca- we'll move on to Caleb. What about you? Are you giving a compliment or a shit sandwich? Uh, I'll do a compliment sandwich. Uh, mm. Dan, Dan already talked about the, the miniature effects. I'm going to say the creature effects in this are amazing yeah. like all the puppet effects i love the look of the aliens in this it's great i love i love a creature feature and uh i wish this movie would have leaned more into that and away from the disaster blowing up shit because like sure. every scene where there's an like a physical alien on screen is fantastic my my negative like all the characters suck everybody in this movie is either the <laughs> smartest person in the world or the biggest idiot in the world sure uh, and, and the other good thing is, uh, the entire Area 51 sequence, like, from the time they get there till the time they leave, is fantastic. I can't imagine why. I can't, I can't <laughs> imagine why. You, you uh, say because of things. Brent Spiner. Because I well, love him. Oh, okay. Well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> good old data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan, I think you might have swayed me a bit. I haven't rewatched this movie since I was whatever age when this came out, but I enjoyed it. Nah. I'm going to give it a compliment sandwich. Hooray! Yeah, you're right. Like, the four leads, like, crushing it as actors. I mean, like, especially Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum. I mean, Jeff Goldblum is he's one of these people that a lot of people love and I, I think is mm-hmm. pretty good, but I think he crushes in this film. I think he's really good. I think Will Smith's really good. I really liked Mary McDonnell. I think she's one of the most underrated actresses from the 90s that no one really talks about that much. That Moving into the bad thing, man, like, when it's bad, it's, like, it's fucking terrible. Like, sure. Like, there's some massive, massive leaps of logic. Like, at one point, Will Smith steals a helicopter and then goes out, like, flies off towards Los Angeles and immediately finds his wife. You know, and then, like, Randy Craig, et cetera, drive through the desert, not knowing where the fuck they're going. They don't have GPS or anything like that. And they end up it's, at the uh, base. It's Godzilla King of the Monsters levels of convenient. Yeah, yes. yeah. Exactly. Like, it is. It's, it's that level of convenience. And yeah, it, it, it's very much how do we get all of our characters to meet in a, in a certain way? Okay. We did it. Now they all meet. Exactly. Now we can go on with the rest of our movie. Exactly. And, and like, you obviously need that in your film, otherwise the film doesn't make sense, and it would be too hard to come up with a great idea as to why these people logically would come together. I, I right. can understand that, especially if you're a screenwriter watch, writing, you know, what is effectively a disaster movie. And Sam, you're missing the most uh, egregious one to me, which is that during the New York evacuation, David and his father get out of New York and make it to Washington, D.C. in uh, eight hours. Now, it's normally a five and a half hour drive to get to to Washington, D.C. from New York. And you're telling me the jam-packed roads he got out of there in time? And and the whole time David's yelling at him to speed up because he's in the fast lane. Come on, go. You're you're in the fast lane. They're passing us. They're passing us on the right. (laughs) I'm not going to lie, that was actually next on my list. The other one was, and then the final one for me was that the aliens can communicate telepathically, 
yet when they get to Earth, they use all the satellites to communicate with each other. And then rather than immediately attacking, they let Earth have a chance to sort of prepare itself and, you know, and it's like trying to defend itself. And then they attack six hours later, like, what the fuck are they waiting well, for? They have to all synchronize their shots for maximum impact. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I will uh, ex- I will plot explain away by saying that they can't speak telepathically over a certain point of uh, period of like distance, so they have to use the satellites in order to communicate with each other. So when they yeah, invade I, other planets, I assume that, that those other planets have satellites. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like, pretty much. I, I assume they could be telepathic <laughs> with each other for like the same distance that like we can talk to each other with our mouth words. Yeah, right. And, okay. and then there's me who's just telepathically louder than everybody. <laughs> Uh, my wife would know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Stacey Hurley. Yeah. Poor Stacey. And then, uh, yeah, final good thing. The dog fights are really cool. And I don't mean a couple of dogs actually fighting. I actually mean, like, the proper dog fights, like the aerial combat and shit like that. Like, mm-hmm. these dog fights between them and the spaceships is awesome. Anywho, that takes us to our scores. Dan, why don't you go first? Why don't you tell us what your score is out of 10,000 aliens? Uh, 9,485 aliens. Fuck, that's a lot of aliens. Ooh, there is a lot of aliens. I'm going to go with 2,300 aliens out of 10,000 possible shit aliens. Sandwich. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. That's a shit sandwich. <laughs> it's, it's still a <laughs> significant a amount of aliens, but it's just not enough aliens to really get you there. I don't think this holds up. I don't think it aged well. Sam has turned off his camera because he's just, like, freaking out, being like, wait, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> yeah, that's a shit sandwich. But anyway, who cares? We'll move on. <laughs> fuck it. Um, I'm positive. I'm going to give it 6,969. There you go. There, you there go, we Dan. go. 69. 69, 69, 69, 69 baby. aliens. It's like a, just a whole bunch of aliens 69 ring. That's what I want. That sounds perfect. <laughs> Anywho, that moves us over to question number two, which is what there, Caleb? Uh, what character in this movie is your spirit animal? Oh, that's very easy. It's a hard saluting guy. Now, this guy might not seem uh, (laughs) auspicious to you guys, but after Bill Pullman does his amazing speech that everyone is aware of, there's this one guy that, like, salutes, like, real fucking hard, and that's how gung-ho I was after hearing that speech. He goes for it. He He's like, I'm an extra on this movie. I have one thing that I have to do. I'm going for this. And he's... Like, he could karate chop, like, a yeah. billion boards in half from that one salute. Like, come on. He's the fucking man. I love that guy. That's a great pick. That's an awesome pick. I had two-ish sort of thing. Like, I, I, love, I loved Tiffany. I loved the girl that went to the stripping, got told, please don't go and hang out. <laughs> Showed up at a stripping job, had the other stripper played by Vivica Fox. Uh, tell her that basically don't don't go don't go meet the aliens but she goes anyway she's like ah oh, fuck it they're gonna beat me up they're gonna be happy with me and then like i was settled on that one but then straight after that like building in los angeles gets blown up it cuts away to a guy in a building in an office just filing shit and there's yeah. no one else in the yeah. and it's just him <laughs> on his own and he's just tirelessly filing at like six o'clock at night i was like that's me that's fucking me. That I'm the ah. Oh, this place would fall apart if it wasn't for fucking me. You know? <laughs> and then and it falls apart with you in it, and you go down <laughs> the ship like a true captain. And fucking exactly, that is exactly it. That's me. What about you, Caleb? Actually, I don't even give a shit about these aliens. I I gotta get these files in their proper places. Um, exactly. Obvi- obviously, the character that I have the greatest affinity with is uh, Lieutenant Commander Data. I mean, Doctor Breakish Oaken. Uh, yeah. because he's great and the last few days have been really exciting exciting <laughs> people are dying out there <laughs> he, after that exchange like he just looks so crestfallen and then he's just like do you want to see him <laughs> you want to meet him <laughs> he's a great pick man what he's a fucking a stellar pick. performance he's phenomenal given that we like we all know him as data this emotionless robot and then in this film, he's the most emotionally filled person he's I've just, ever seen on fucking... Yeah. yeah, like he's just a live wire. He's so fucking... Like he's zany, which is not yeah. a word that I think I've ever used. Well, there we go. Uh, this is over to question number three. What is it there, Dan? What deep philosophical debate arose in you during the, uh, viewing, your viewing of this film? This one is easy for me. As we see in the film, Will Smith keeps getting rejected from NASA, from being a pilot for NASA. 
and I wondered why that was, and I've come to the conclusion that they might have rejected him because his eyesight sucks. So, so he gets woken up, you know, go back to sleep, it's just an earthquake. He walks out onto the street, gets all the way to his, you know, like letterbox or whatever to collect the mail. Huh. He doesn't notice a giant fucking alien spaceship hanging off in the distance that's literally covering all of Los Angeles. How do you walk out of your house and not notice that? Especially like all your neighbors around you notice it. You don't notice it. I'm picking that. I'm picking his eyesight absolutely sucks. Hey, Jasmine, neighbors are moving out. <laughs> Guess they finally got scared. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What about you, Kevin? Yeah. Uh, my deep philosophical debate that I had while I was watching this was, uh, why am I spending so much of my limited time on this planet watching this two and a half hour movie? Mm. <laughs> I, for, I, I do forget constantly this is a two and a half hour movie. Oh yeah, I've got to admit, I, I did seriously get halfway through writing a message to you going, do you want to pick another film when I saw the runtime of this? <laughs> <laughs> See, you say that, but I watch it, like, on a loop on Independence Day, so, like, it, to me, it's just, like, it's a thing that happens. It's, it's just, like, it, it, this happens in the background, and I'm just existing in the world around it. Oh, it makes sense, man. I do the same with Human Centipede on Valentine's Day, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, Dan makes fun of me for liking 2001 A Space Odyssey, but, like, this movie wastes just as much time, but, like, for less of a good reason. Uh, that's like, incorrect. It's just is much, much better than 2001 Space Odyssey. It, because things it's actually more, happen. Like, it's, it's more directly entertaining, uh, but it's just, like, it's all surface level. But it's like, there's literally sure. just scenes of you waiting for things to happen. Sure. Because Roland Emmerich Th just wants to drag his dick all over our faces. <laughs> I mean, I, I would argue that Stanley Kubrick does that by having two separate space shuttle flights that take five minutes each. Uh, book ended by uh, a guy on a space station for all of three seconds. I mean, I could uh, I could explain to you why he does that, but you wouldn't want to listen. No, because he's a hack. <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, I yeah, I think my argument for Stanley Kubrick not being a hack would probably take another couple of hours. So why don't we move on to the next? <laughs> <laughs> we uh, might be wait, here for I the entire runtime of Independence Day. Let's just skip Dan. Let's just skip Dan. We don't need to hear is it. <laughs> no, my what, deep what, philosophical what, debate is this is better than fucking 2001 Space Odyssey. No, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, mine is actually like based off of everything we've seen happen in 2020. Is the human response actually realistic? Because a lot of it is just, like, patience, hmm. not doing anything, trying to actually communicate with the spaceships, where, like, nowadays, like, there was a, in, in the movie, they were like, please don't shoot at the spaceship because you might start an intergalactic war. And I guarantee a bunch of motherfuckers would watch that and be like, I ain't starting no international intergalactic war and just start fucking firing an AK-47 in the air, uh, not hit the spaceship, and then the bullets would turn down and hit them. I, I'm just, like... Seeing the response to COVID, I'm just like, there's no way anything in this movie seems realistic anymore in, in terms of response. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, based on what I know about America, which is just from a moral high ground, basically. Because like, <laughs> <laughs> we kick COVID's ass. Um, yeah, right. like, I agree with you. Like, I can't imagine that, like, even, even in, like, these sort of cosmopolitan cities that are typically more left-wing, that you are going to get people down there with guns shooting at those fucking spaceships. And not if, only that, but you also have, like, the nuclear option that they'd probably ex exercise much earlier than they did in this movie. Mm. If, if I may, just for a second, I feel like COVID is another thing like gun violence where every other country's already figured it out, and America's just like, well, there's nothing we can do, we're just going to have to live with it. Yeah. 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 Anywho, that moves us over to our, the first of our Patreon questions. This question comes courtesy of the amazing man, this is Dave Baker. Dave has a Patreon himself at patreon.com forward slash your favorite. On it, he posts a ton of awesome content you guys should all go check out. There is a link down in the show notes. And what Dave would like to know is which two characters from this film would you guys like with you at a house party? President Bill Pullman, because he's, sure. uh, very, he's very responsible and he can take care of my drunk ass. And <laughs> Marty Gilbert. Uh, yeah. Who is uh, Harvey Firestein's character? Harvey so Firestein. He can run around going, David, 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 David. You think I'd be panicking about some so simple, David? <laughs> <laughs> he was my backup answer for my spirit animal. Just a guy constantly worrying about oh, me his mother, too. and then gets blown up in a fucking in a, in an attack. I, yeah, I gotta call my mother. I gotta call my lawyer. I have to get my lawyer. Oh, hold your horses there, Buckaroo Banzai. What about you, Dan? Who would you want at your house party? 
All right, so uh, my house party, I would first take Dr. Oaken uh, because I have uh, very many friends that like to partake in the smoking culture, and I feel like he would trip them out so fucking hard. It'd be hilarious. Yeah, he'd show <laughs> I feel like he's uh, into too. LSD. Yeah. Like, I feel and, like he's uh, just going to bring a bag of shrooms and fuck up the party. Just dose everyone, yeah. <laughs> I've been at a party where people have done shrooms, so it, it wouldn't be anything new. <laughs> Uh, my second answer is Steve Hiller, because he could have been at a barbecue, and I would like him to go to a barbecue. <laughs> yeah. Like, shit, I saw it, but yeah, no, he'd probably be a lot of fun at a barbecue. <laughs> and if shit gets out of hand, he's very handy with his fist as well, so he'd be able to back yeah. you up in a fight or whatever. He's pretty good. Yeah, yeah and, He was and, able to knock out so... an alien through its bio suit. <laughs> exactly. It's pretty And amazing. anytime someone's coming back down from their high, he can, he can be there to greet them. Welcome to Earth. Earth. Don't... Start <laughs> this with me. He clearly is it an earthquake? Earth- Dan, is it an earthquake? <sighs> it's bar- My fist is barely going to be a four-pointer. Go back to sleep. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with this Tiffany the Stripper for fairly obvious reasons. And I also want Randy Quaid there. I, like, like, I'm going to preface this by saying this isn't my house party. But I want to show up with... Oh, two- sure. Yeah, yeah. I want to show up at someone else's house with the two most interesting people that I can find. So what... <laughs> So I show up with a stripper who's just like probably a flat earther, probably a whole bunch of other stupid shit that should, you know, be firing around wild theories. And, um, and yeah, Randy Quaid as well. I mean, like, simply because like I'd get there and then within like half an hour, an hour, which is about the perfect time for me for hang- hanging out at parties nowadays, somebody would go, hey, your friend's <laughs> fucking weird and acting like a dick. And I'd be like, oh, I better go home. I'll see you guys later. And it's like the perfect excuse. Honorable mention <laughs> to the woman who goes, oh, I hope they bring back Elvis. <laughs> yeah, she'd be awesome. <laughs> she'd know how to party. <laughs> Anywho, that moves us over to question number five. What is it there? Caleb? Uh, what's your most controversial opinion about this film? I'll actually hold priority on this one and say that uh, my controversial opinion on this film is that it's dog ass. Oh! Ho, 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 ho. Uh, I'll, I'll go to the other opposite side of the coin and say I think this is a perfect su- summer blockbuster movie. Oh. How am I going to fit right in the middle? Simply by saying this. President Whitmore is probably one of the worst presidents in film history. They elected a warrior and they got a win. Yeah, exactly. Elected they're not attacking warrior. you, they're attacking your age. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone goes on about how he's like one of the best presidents in cinematic, cinematic history. He gives That's one because good they speech. remember the speech. Yeah, that's what they yes. all remember. They, they remember the speech. They don't remember him hanging out of the White House well, and waiting fucking ages there to evacuate before the bloody while the president's sweeping around. People remember presidents re- like the same way they remember like years of their lives. You don't remember the cumulative thing. You remember like one or two good moments. It's like everybody remembers exactly. the speech, and that's the thing that like that's the one thing that he did. That was good. Exactly. They don't remember the, the hesitation around the nukes and actually using the nukes. They don't remember him immediately evacuating yeah. the White House when he probably should have. They don't remember him getting into a fighter plane and trying to fucking shoot down the aliens when all the rest of the like, chief of staff has been removed or, you know, like everyone else that could possibly lead the country. But he goes and puts himself on the front fucking line. You know, they don't remember any of that. Yeah. Like, I legitimately... Come on, man. He's a fighter pilot. He belongs in the air. Yeah, okay, well then he shouldn't be the fucking president. I can fly. I'm pilot. Someone else president. <laughs> I'm, I'm pilot. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know the internet's going to hate me for that, because the internet fucking loves this guy as a president, but I'm, I'm just saying, yeah. No, it's, 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 a, it's a fair criticism. I, I think all that matters is end results, and uh, he got his end results by being the guy that led the charge to cause the, the downfall. Like how all American presidents are remembered fondly, he happened to be the person there when the important thing happened. That is correct. And he also sacrificed Randy Quaid for the benefit of humanity, so that's pretty good. God bless. <laughs> uh, this is over to our next Patreon question, which is from the amazing woman that is Emily Higgins. Emily was on our podcast last week at Reviewing the Gentleman, and she runs the Tasteless Podcast, a podcast in which she basically goes to argue for an incredibly rubbish film and but she says it's amazing and sort of compares it to a film that everybody loves and she's also started up a new podcast where she interviews a strong female lead so her last week's episode was on Kristana Loken uh the star of Terminator 3 aside from Arnie and the others mm-hmm. but uh mm-hmm. yeah interviewed her and she's got another one another good awesome one coming up that I'm very much looking forward to but uh yeah link down in the show notes and what would Emily like to know there Dan 
Which side character would make for the best spin-off movie? I feel like I've shat all over him, but I actually want Randy Quaid. And I say Randy Quaid, I don't say his character Russell Casey, because I'm convinced, and there's no one in the world that anyone can convince me otherwise, that a film crew didn't follow around a drunk Randy Quaid for a couple of days and then just put that footage into this movie. You are correct, sir. That is exactly what happened. Yes! <laughs> I knew it! Uh, the side character that I would like to see in a solo film, uh, and surprisingly is my favorite character in the movie, Dr. Oaken. Uh, I want to see him in like a faux Bill Nye the Science Guy type thing where he just explains shit, but it's yeah. like yeah. off the wall sci fi concepts that like are completely out of context. But it's just like Brent Spiner being very energetic and passionate about these make believe topics. I think that would be great. Can can it be about how his character survived in a coma for twenty years only to suddenly wake up for the sequel of the movie? Is it legit? <laughs> yeah, legit. He, so he he's not dead at, 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 when uh, after the alien attack scene in this movie, he wakes up from a fucking coma uh, where his brother has actually taken over head research at Area Fifty One. What the fuck? But you why? Got me serious yes. right now? No, I'm a hundred percent. I'm hundred percent serious. I did go see Independence Day Resurgence because I fucking hate myself. <laughs> I need to hate watch this. I need to hate watch. Yeah, this. it's uh, yeah. Get 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 loaded. Get loaded. Uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Excellent. Uh, my I have to side make sure character. that I watch it and just enjoy it immensely, just to vex you. Uh, it won't affect me in any way, shape, or form, and you also won't get any enjoyment out of it because it, it because for the exact same reasons that you hate. Well, I'm not going to say hate that you uh like. Terminator 2 and Aliens less than the originals, uh, it is the same reason why I dislike Independence Day Resurgence. Fair enough. Makes sense. My side character would actually be Miguel, because he is actually the only, like, child character, I'm going to say, from this movie that doesn't appear in Resurgence, so we never see, like, what happened to him after this movie, because uh, basically, like, both um, Steve Hiller's stepkid and uh, Mae Whitman uh, go on to become fighter pilots uh, in the new uh, United Nations uh, Space Army. Oh. But we don't see anything from Miguel. Like, he just fucks off into nothingness. So who knows what happened to that guy? But I want to know what happened after this movie, because he ends the movie very proud of his father, and I want to see how he carries on the legacy of his drunken idiot fighter pilot father who uh, rammed himself into a big gun. Oh, Do you reckon he's out there somewhere crop dusting someone else's farm? Uh, no, definitely not. I think he's out there riding on a motorcycle. I think uh, I think he tried to take over his dad's crop dusting business, but uh, realized too late that he didn't know how to fly the plane and met a tragic end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, and that tragic end was when a jet engine fell through Donnie Darko's fucking uh, ceiling because he uh, plays Frank the Rabbit in Donnie Darko. Yeah, that actor. Hooray! A movie that we can both hate. Yes. Mary McDonald's, uh, Mary McDonald's also in that movie too. I was which is, about uh, to say that she's the mom, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 uh, ironic because uh, two people from my favorite movie uh, are in uh, one of my least favorite movies. <laughs> okay, um, moves us over to another Patreon question. This question comes courtesy of the amazing man that is Dan Brennick. Dan, why don't you tell us Ooh. what the question is? Yeah. Uh, so if you're me and you're a psychopath and you want to troll people to death. You ask, where would you have put Blink-182's hit single that put them on the map, All the Small Things, uh, into this movie, and you can't say the trash? Ah, I want to say the trash. God, I want to say the trash. (laughs) Why don't you leave this Caleb? Where would you have put it? Uh, Playing on a constant loop at a very low volume throughout the entire movie. (laughs) That is the best fucking answer we've ever had. Oh, why not, Caleb? (laughs) After about ten minutes, you'd be sitting there going, Something's not right here, eh? <laughs> the Wait, I'm watching walks. Independence Day. That's I the problem, and you shut it off. <laughs> and then you'd be falling asleep that night, and just like, like when the, Tom when the aliens fucking come, alien believing like, face rolls like, into your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> like when your sleep paralysis demon comes in the shape of the alien from this movie, like you just start humming all the small things to yourself. What taking a power drill to your temple? Yeah, that sounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Dan? Where would you have put it in? Uh, I would have put it at, like relatively the beginning, where 
you know, all the news broadcasts are getting interrupted and such. Like, I, I assume that MTV would have been interrupted uh, with this music video playing and like, we have a special breaking news alert. Aliens exist. Yay. And then they start playing Aliens Exist from Blink-182. I was about to say, there's another good Blink-182 song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's coming up later. Ooh, can't wait. Uh, yeah, for me, oh, just just the strip club scene. Just when Tiffany and, uh, what's her name, Jasmine are all hanging out at the strip club. Just something like that. You can imagine girls dancing to that. I haven't been to a strip club yeah. in a long time, but I'm pretty sure they still dance songs from the 90s. They all dance to that fucking Riding Your Pony song and shit like that. So why not Blink-182? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm done. Yeah, there we go. That's it. Uh, moves us over to question number eight. What is it there, Caleb? What character do you wish had gotten punched in the dick? Can we all say it on three? <laughs> I feel like we all have the same answer here. You count us uh, down. Uh, uh, one, two, three. Albert, Albert Nimziki. Nimziki, yes! <laughs> yes! Fuck that Secretary of State guy. Fuck him. Yeah. Fucking fuck punch him, him fuck in him the hard. dick. I'm not Jewish. Nobody's perfect. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to have to disagree. I, uh, I wish that what? the alien would have gotten punched in the dick uh, because there is <laughs> not a single Earth. alien. There is not a single alien genital in this movie. And I'm kind of curious. <laughs> <laughs> how, I mean, that's fair. Ha, OK, first of all, how do we not know he didn't get punched it's- in the dick? When Will Smith punched that alien right in the face, how do we know he doesn't have his dick yeah. on his exoskeleton or whatever on side of his on on his face? Oh my god, those eyes could have been a sister. Be- you know, you know, there's people in the world who've jerked off to that alien. Oh yeah, I can't wait to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> what? So you guys can form a club? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my favorite part is the tentacles. <laughs> there's a lot of those. Uh, that moves us over to that moves us over to question number nine. What is it there, Dan? Uh, what quote from this movie would be the worst to hear after having sex? Your wife is bleeding internally, Mr. President. Perhaps if we had gotten to her earlier. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> what about you, Caleb? What's yours? If this isn't an insanely beautiful woman, I'm hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> That's good as well. Mine is, uh, oh my God. Oh my God. I got to call my brother. I got to call my housekeeper. I got to call my lawyer. (laughs) Forget about my lawyer. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, As soon as I heard that again, I'm like, that's the instant answer. Uh, RV Firestein, greatest gift to God's green earth. Awesome answers, guys. Awesome answers to one of our fan favorite questions. Moves us down to our final question that can be applied to any film, which is what bizarrely specific top 10 list would you guys have put this movie on? Movies that I genuinely don't enjoy, but be- would be willing to watch like at any time when somebody suggested it. Like this, this movie occupies a very weird space because I genuinely enjoy it and I genuinely dislike it. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Have you got any others? I'd have to think on that, honestly. That might be a top ten list that I have to kind of compile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Paul, hit us up in like three months. Yeah, exactly. There's one for you, Paul. What about you, Dan? Uh, top ten movies made by directors before they started to suck. Oh, that's because uh, uh, after The Patriot, which uh, I still have to see again because I, I I saw it like years and years ago. But uh, after The Patriot, Roland Emmerich becomes uh, a garbage can. Uh, so uh, this this is his best movie that I've seen. But yeah, that's that's where it would go. Uh, I am going to go for the top ten movies where two of the male characters have a better chemistry than one of the male characters have with their love interest. And so for this, I'm going to go with Will Smith and his buddy, who I think is played by Harry Connick Jr. Yes, he is. It is a yeah. time to kick who- the tires and light the fires, Big Daddy. That's the one, but he's like outrageously flirting with Will Smith throughout the like first part of this movie to the point that I'm <laughs> thinking that they had something else going on. And, like, I g- genuinely laughed out loud at the scene where he was down proposing, like, pretending yeah. to propose Stevie, to the guy walked in. this is a yeah. wedding ring. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, I genuinely, yeah. like, laughed out loud at that bit. And I was like, these two are, like, these two are hot for each other. Imagine how mad people would be if a movie made that joke today. There's no reason to hate it because it's not homophobic in any way, shape, or form. Because all that happens is a guy walks in. Throws his hands up like, hey, you guys do you, and he walks off, and no one says anything. And they go yeah, he, right back to their conversation. 
Exactly. He's yeah. like really polite about it. He doesn't start calling them like, you know, like slurs and stuff yeah. like that. He just, he's just really yeah. friendly about it. It, it. It's just a throwaway thing that quickly happens and then they move on from it and no one cares. Exactly. So it's actually uh, sort of secretly woke. Yeah. In his own little way. Yeah. He, he knew that he couldn't say anything nice, so he didn't say anything at all. Exactly. Yeah. It was very respectful of their uh, privacy. Anywho, that moves us down to our personal questions, which are three questions that we thought of while we were watching this film. Caleb, why don't you lead us off? Which would you rather have on your spaceship? A shield that can stop a nuke, a beam that can blow up a city block, or a computer that Jeff Goldblum can't hack? (laughs) Uh, A computer that Jeff Goldblum can't hack. Because apparently he can hack any fucking computer in, in the world with his fucking Macintosh laptop. It's true. And like I'm, I'm the same answer as you because that motherfucker is forever trying to hack into my computer and get my tasteful and sometimes t- distasteful nudes, and I'm just sick of it. Fucking sick of Jeff yeah. Goldblum, man. Leave me the fuck alone. You hear that, <laughs> Jeff? Fuck off. I would go for the shield because that shit's pretty punk rock. That and honestly, if you if you had that powerful of a shield, you wouldn't need an offensive weapon because you could just ram into the buildings. That's true. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, that's true. Way to think smart about this one, Caleb. Wait. I'm, I'm waiting for the dig that it's smarter than this movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what you got the uh, next there, Caleb? If you assumed that somebody was a ballet dancer and they turned out to actually be a stripper, how many seconds would you be able to stay alive before you had to crawl up your ass and die out of embarrassment? <laughs> I love this question. Be- awesome. Because, frankly, I'm embarrassed thinking about it. Yeah. Okay, so I... I actually did the opposite once. I was on the piss over with a group of mates when we were living over in London, on the piss, and then one of our friends introduced us to a lovely young English girl who I started chatting to, and I said, oh, what do you do for work? And she goes, oh, I'm a dancer. And I knew the friend of the friend had done counting work for a strip club, and so I thought, oh, they must, she must be a stripper. So I said to her, what club do you dance at? Oh, yikes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Took a pause and then she just looked at me and she goes, Sorry, what did you ask me? And I said, Oh, what club do you dance at? Like, Oh, no. She gave you an out and you, you do- still you went with doubled it. You down. Of course I fucking doubled down. I was like 10 beers <laughs> oh. deep. It was like, you know, 11, 12 o'clock at night. I'm just like, you know, just in my own zone of just drunken stupidity. And she goes, Oh, no, no. I don't dance at a club. I work in a theater production. Holy fuck, bud. Oh, I, I'm dying inside just thinking about that. Jesus Christ. Uh, if that ever happened to me, my soul would immediately exit my body. Yeah. Me and her laughed about it. We had a good laugh about it. I had to laugh. She, <laughs> right. I think she died she, a bit inside. She, gave, she, she gave you a courtesy laugh. She did. And she didn't talk to me for the rest of the night. And then every other time I saw her after that. But I'm pretty I sure we're still why. mates. <laughs> oh, ballet. Exotic. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Don't, Don't be. be. My baby's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> now, if she had that exchange with you, keep her forever. Oh, oh yeah, exactly. Fuck. Uh, what's your last oh, question there, Caleb? Is that glass bulletproof? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> uh, talking about 1996 and films that probably no one remembers, no, that glass is not Adam Sandler or Damon Wayans. It is definitely not bulletproof. <sighs> I knew zero people were going to get that. <laughs> there we go. There's my lame moment of the thing. But no, it's definitely not bulletproof. No. Are no. you sure it wasn't being like, hey, are you a stripper? Like, come on. <laughs> like, that, that, that's your lame moment for the episode. You had your one. Oh, no, you I'm gotta proud edit of that. You got to that other one out. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of my stupidity. Anywho, that moves us down to Dan. What are your questions here, Dan? All right. Uh, so in this movie, uh, for some fucking reason, Steve gets Jasmine. A wedding ring with fucking dolphins on it. So what weird thing is your wife Jasmine into? Jasmine is the things for dolphins. Yeah. Uh, what weird thing is your wife into that you'd put on her wedding band? Stacy isn't really into anything. And I say that in the most nicest way possible. She's a very oh, much... A- so you don't have to get her a wedding band. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> smart, smart way to save some money, Caleb. <laughs> Caleb, uh, what, what is Vanessa? What is the physical representation of asking me what I'm thinking about every time I'm trying to enjoy three seconds of silence? <laughs> a foghorn? <laughs> uh, do- dolphins. <laughs> that, oh, that. wait. Are, are you referencing the lighthouse, Sam? Because yes, that is correct. <laughs> if, if that's the case. Something like that. All right. So uh, I was watching the director's commentary because fuck you, Caleb. 
Uh, and Roland Emmerich was talking about how they screened this movie in the White House for Bill Clinton. Uh, and they were just kind of like remarking about like how their set dressers did such a good job of kind of replicating the White House. So uh, and they were talking also talking about like how crazy it was that they were screening the movie in the White House. So to that effect, uh, where would be the most fitting place to watch your most favorite movie? I got like a like I rotate between favorite films. Uh, like Casablanca, for instance, is one of my favorite films of all time. But like I probably wouldn't want to go to Morocco at the moment to watch Casablanca. At the uh, another one too is Twelve Angry Men. But I don't want to go to court to watch a movie. So probably Skywalker Ranch, like a middle to watch Empire Strikes Back, and a middle that would mean hanging out with George Lucas. Ah, uh, uh, hey Sam, how are you doing? Exactly. So I'm George Lucas. Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. You're in my movie now. You're my new star. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, there we go. I could take a run at Jar Jar Binks as being the most annoying thing in the Star Wars universe. So there we go. That'd be quite <laughs> fucking. That'd be proud claim to fame. I guess that. Yeah. What about you, Caleb? Uh, give me one second to find out what the name of it is here. What your favorite movie? Uh, bu- 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 bu. <laughs> no, the uh, the name of the place. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the best place to watch my favorite movie would be uh. The McMurdo Research Outpost in Antarctica, which is the United States uh, Research Outpost in Antarctica, because my favorite movie is John Carpenter's The Thing. Ooh, good film. Good pick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm like currently that. doing the exercise of ranking my top 100 movies for uh, Paul, and that is on my list very high up. Same. I'm doing the exact same thing, and that is possibly in my top 20. <laughs> Uh, it's like right after my, it might be in my top 10 right now. I don't know. I think it's somewhere between love actually in the notebook, but it's up there. Are you, are you, I can't, uh, I'm just, I'm just moving on ahead with uh, my next question. Good. Good. Uh, could computers today be as advanced as David's laptop is in 1996? Of course yeah, not. No. Nah. Yeah, exactly. Good answer. That is, that is also the correct answer. David's laptop is the most powerful thing that's ever existed in human history. Do you reckon it's just got that sort of Jeff Goldblum magic? He just says, uh, at it a lot, and it's just like, okay, fu- uh, shut up, uh, I'll, I'll just do the thing faster. And, and the computer itself is a 2001 Space Odyssey reference. I actually appreciate that. I'm like, oh, it's a 2001 Space Odyssey reference. For like the zero people listening to this that haven't seen it get beaten to death on the internet, it is like the biggest plot hole that gets ripped apart, isn't it? That the... How could a Mac from 96 actually interact with the computer system yeah. from an alien spaceship? Because he knows how to hook up TV cable. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a glorified he's very TV very technically repairman. minded. David, you went, to, you, to, you went to MIT for eight years and became a TV repairman. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my, my thing is that in the, the 1990s, no one knew what fa- fucking hacking was. Uh, see also the movie Swordfish, an entire movie about yeah. computer hacking. Or the net. <laughs> Another I mean, horrendous film. Yeah. So, like, I, I give it a general pass because no one in the 90s knew what fucking computer hacking was. Or even hackers. There we go. How could f- forget that? That was another horrendous nah. film. Yeah. Okay, moves me over to my questions. There's quite a few deaths in this film, but I'm going to let you guys have the ability to save one and try and figure a way to include them for the rest of the film. So, you can save the first lady, or you can save Randy Quaid's character, Russell Casey, or you can save Goldblum's boss, who we've mentioned, played by Harvey Firestein. Who are you going to save? Oh, actually, no, we'll check in, we'll check in uh, Harry Connick Jr. as well. You can save him too. Yeah. Who, who, who are you saving? Which one of those guys do you reckon shouldn't have died? Jeff Goldblum's go, boss. He's the best. Yeah, Jeff Gold, Yeah, Har- Harvey Firestein. Uh, David. Like, he, uh, the only thing that his death served was a funny comedic moment where he goes, oh, crap, and then dies. <laughs> It, it, it was. Every, every, it was like a funny sacrificial lamb, effectively. Yeah, like Mary McDonald dying is the reason why they use nukes. Uh, Randy Quaid dying is the reason they win, and Harry Connick Jr. is the reason why Will Smith is so fired up to go fight some fucking aliens. So, like, all three of those characters need that motivation. David needs no motivation other than to just be like, "I'm trying to save the world because that's my character motivation." I do love how Will Smith spends all of like two seconds of a scene mourning his friend when he dies. We get a. That is, <laughs> There is an extended edition, and I'm, I believe there is uh, a thing where he actually does mourn his, his friend uh, that he uh, pro- possibly loved very much. Whereas this film is just a two-second shot of him just sort of sad in face. Oh, back into it. Who cares? Put your mask back on! That's an ultramarine! <laughs> Anywho, that moves me on to my next question. 
So I mentioned before that Tiffany goes to her stripping job, but so does Vivica A. Fox's character of Jasmine also shows up uh, at their stripping job. I mean, like, or even just work in general. Like, I want to know what your guys' reaction would be if aliens showed up right now, hovering over your city. You don't know what the fuck's going on. Would you guys still show up to work? Oh, I'd be Filer guy. There's no doubt about it. You reckon? Yeah. I'd be the guy I in mean, the office I'm, getting blown up. I'm still going to work during a fucking global pandemic, so. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so uh, it's whatever. Yeah, I, I'd just be office <laughs> filer guy and die immediately. It's fine. <laughs> I love your guys' dedication. Well done. Very proud of you. And then yeah. well, final question and the one I've been debating with the most is who would you guys feel most comfortable leaving your wife slash girlfriend slash partner, whatever you want to call them, who would you guys feel most comfortable leaving them with alone? Russell Cassie, who's played by Randy Quaid, or Albert Nimziki, or Dr. Oaken. Who would you guys feel most comfortable leaving your partner around? Dr. Oaken, even if he knocked her up, I'd gladly raise his kids. <laughs> You're a good man. Uh, a good I have man. Dr. Oaken for a completely different reason, because uh, Ashley, as soon as, she start- as soon as Oaken started talking at her, would just be like, all right, I'm fucking out, and just would walk away. So... <laughs> Yeah, he he seems a lot less harmless than the other two. Like I can imagine. She'd, yeah. Oh, oh, a hundred percent. I can imagine Ashley would be like, "I'm fucking out with the other two, but I think those other two just would come after her with a fucking passion, whether drunkenly or like psychotically. Yeah, totally. I have the nuclear option. <laughs> there we go. That moves us down to our final question, which we mentioned before is a new Patreon question. This question comes courtesy of um, uh, Mr. Chris Yini. Thanks to thank you, Chris, for signing up. We've got to do a shout out to you and, of course, Duty Dutrim of Shaken Not Nerd, who are our two most recent Patreons. Love you guys. Love the support you guys are giving us. It's very much appreciated. And what Chris would like to know is what song would we have inserted into the soundtrack and at what point during this film and why? Why don't you lead us off, Caleb? Uh, Blink 182's All the Small Things <laughs> at a very low volume on a constant loop throughout the entire movie. <laughs> because now that's all oh, I can think yes. of. <laughs> Oh, that's a good throwback. Well done, Caleb. Proud of that. Top that, Dan. I will. Uh, Aliens Exist goes in over R.E.M.'s End of the World. Uh, because while R.E.M.'s end of, uh, It's the End of the World as we know it is very on the nose, Aliens Exist is arguably even more on the nose and perfect for this movie. Yeah, that's good. Talking about on the nose songs and movies, I would have gone with the Talking Heads as we're on the road to nowhere and just, just when that convoy of driving through the salt flats. You know, Randy Quaid and all his boys are just driving through the middle of nowhere. They've got no idea where they're going, but they inexplicably end up at Area 51. Yeah, that. Absolutely that. I saw an army base about 20 clicks down the road. I ain't on the map. Well, what's there? I'll tell you. Uh, we'll, let's go. Hey, uh, yeah. final bonus. Nobody bitch. could find Area 51 since the fucking, like, 60s or whatever. But then, like, all of a sudden in this movie, everybody finds it on the same day. Yeah. Exactly, like... It became declassified. Everyone knew it was up. Like, moths to the light or something. It's just like, like, aliens evade. Okay, we all know where Area 51 is. We've had it hard built into human DNA by um, Bill Gates and fucking, like, vaccines and shit like that. We know exactly where it yeah, is. Yeah, th- thanks, Bill Gates' vaccines. <laughs> we know exactly where to go if we need to fight off an alien invasion. There we go. Uh, welcome back to this conspiracy podcast where we review the most biggest bullshit on the ever in the universe. Uh, anywho, that takes us down to the end. Thank you to these guys. Thank you for joining us to discuss this film. I'm so glad to get on to such massive, massive fans of it. Especially you, Caleb. It sounds like you love this film. Yeah. Yeah, I, I never knew that my, my fandom was only surpassed by uh, a person I shared a podcast with. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, but, but before we end it, why don't you guys tell us about the amazing Netflix and Swill and everything you guys do? Uh, we watch Netflix movies. We talk about them. Uh, sometimes we drink. Mm-hmm. consume our product yes uh yeah, yeah. We, we 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 watch the netflix stuff so sometimes you don't have to and sometimes we tell you to because that's just how we are yeah that sums it up it's a great show i obviously have said this a million times but I only get people on this podcast whose podcast i listen to myself and i love you guys you poor man yeah i know it's great it's fun i, I especially love the episode that you did on falling in love i know we joke about and about it heaps dan about you and your partner watching that fucking god awful film that was supposedly sweet ass cousin. Yeah, there we go. Supposedly set in New Zealand, but yeah, I was yeah like listening. <laughs> just but like I appreciate the good work that you guys do for the listening audience in terms of watching just such horrible, horrible films and then warning us not to watch them. I very much appreciate that because there comes a point usually when I'm like taking care of a baby at four o'clock in the morning where I'm skipping through Netflix and don't give a shit what I'm about to watch. 
and then there's just like a little alarm bell goes off of like, no, wait, those guys said this is shit. Don't don't start playing this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. You've saved me. Uh, yeah, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you guys and all that sort of fun stuff? Netflixandswill.com. It's your one-stop shop for all things Netflix and Swill. Nailed That's it. a good disclaimer. Uh, anywho, uh, upcoming episodes from us. We, uh, we've got Liz and Machu back next week to do an episode on Eurovision. I can't remember. the was the Story of Fire Saga. Or whatever Eurovision the Song called. Contest, the Story of Fire Saga. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. There we go. That's next week's episode. We it's, just did a review on this like three weeks ago. movie of the year. Exactly. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. I'm not going to get into it. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it, but both of those two have sent me audio clips of them singing, so yeah, I kind of feel obligated to see it now. Uh, we also have started pumping out more Patreon episodes on our Patreon feed, which you guys can listen to if you subscribe to our Patreon for the low, low dollar a month. Basically, we just throw 10 questions at different films. This month's one was uh, or Dave Baker. We basically did, yeah, Spartacus. And Kiki's Delivery Service. There we go. Thank you, Dan. Spartacus and Kiki. I just listened to those yesterday, so I'm very, they're very present in my mind. Excellent. Yeah, that was our most recent one because we've asked Dave a couple of times for movies and he only just, we, we gave us 10 and we decided to pick two from that, which is pretty cool. And so if you want some Stacey action, you can go over there and listen to those. Uh, next month's Patreon only episode is, well, the, the aforementioned Emily Higgins has asked us to do Inconceivable, the 2017 film starring Nicolas Cage, Gina Gershon, and Nikki Whelan. And if you think this is terrible as it sounds, <laughs> it's fucking worse. It's worse than that. <laughs> a film in which Gina oh, Gershon and Nicolas wait. Cage play a hot young couple in 2017 who are trying to have a kid wait, what? and then get Nikki Whelan to be their surrogate. Wait, what? Yes. That is the film. Gina Gershon. Well, I know what I'm doing for B-Movie Saturday. You have to do it, man. You have to do it. Features one of the worst movie mistakes in history. I don't... All I can say is it's when she's having a photo taken of her. It's like, it's phenomenal. Like, the, the, this one girl's taking a photo of another pair of girls, and her fingers are all over the, like, the camera lens on the phone. Like, she's holding it like she's cupping it, <laughs> so that the entire back cover of the phone is, like, covered by her hands. She's like, smile! And then it shows the photo on the other side, you're like, fuck off. Fuck this shit. <laughs> Well, I can't wait for this shit. <laughs> I can't wait to spend $5 to rent this. Oh, don't do it to yourself. Uh, <laughs> anywho, thanks again to you guys. I just, I just became a patron of your show so that I can listen to you talk about Kiki's delivery service. Oh, awesome. Thank you, my man. So shout him out, motherfucker. Here we go. Oh, and welcome Hooray. to your Patreon, Caleb. He's the man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, if you want to get in contact with us, you can find us on Twitter at Movie Reviews In, which we are most prolific on. You can also find us on Facebook, which we're occasionally on, which is facebook.com forward slash Movie Reviews and 20Qs. Or you can send us an email at mritqs at gmail.com. We also have an Instagram now. Uh, for those people that don't realize, New Zealand is so backdated with technology that we've just got Instagram in the last three months. It's been a massive revelation to us, and we've all started using it. All five of us. So, yeah, you can follow us on Instagram as well. But, uh, yeah, anyway, that's thanks from me. Uh, fuck, I can't think of any goodbyes. That'll do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so long from Earth. David, that's not checkmate. This is not checkmate. Damn it, it's checkmate.